If you want to rotate a normal map texture, you cannot just rotate it like a regular image, because the colors tell us in which direction the surface is pointing. For example, if a pixel is pink, we know that the surface is pointing to the bottom right corner. So when we rotate a normal map, we also have to rotate the colors in a specific way. So in Blender, let's select the cube, press S and let's scale it up so that the camera is inside the cube. And then I will click here to go into the camera view. Let's open a shader editor window. And with the cube selected, we already have a material here. So let's get rid of this and let's add a texture coordinate node. Let's try to display the window coordinates, this socket here. But in order to see what we're doing, we have to switch to the material preview mode up here. So now we see a coordinate system. And if we change the output dimensions, the coordinate system will change with it. Now let's load our normal map texture into Blender. We can add an image texture node. And here we can open the file from our disk. To fix the stretching, we have to set the output dimensions to the same as our image file. So in my case, that's 2048 on both axes. Now the colors of that image look very strange. First, we should set the color space to non-color data, which means that Blender is going to read the data just as it is stored in the image file. And if we zoom in, we also want to get clear pixel borders, so we should set the interpolation to closest. Uh, let's also go to the bottom of the output tab, post-processing, and here we should set the dithering to zero. And let's also go to the render settings, and here we could disable the color management by setting the display device to none. Okay, now we have loaded our normal map into Blender, and if we would now render an image, we would get back exactly the same image that we had as an input. Okay, so now let's rotate our image, and we cannot do this after the image texture node. Instead, we have to change the coordinate system. So we can place a vector rotate node, and we want to rotate it around the z-axis, because x and y are part of the image plane. And now we can change the angle, and as you can see, the pivot point is at the bottom left corner, which is where our coordinate system is 0, 0. We can define a custom pivot point if we set x and y to 0.5. We now rotate around the center of the image. We can now rotate our texture, but this is not any different from using a photo editing software. We also have to rotate the normal vectors. In a normal map, the colors, red, green and blue, are used to store coordinates of a vector, x, y and z. So this would mean that we get the vector data here from the color output. And we should be able to use a vector rotate node again to just rotate this vector around the z-axis. But if we try that, it doesn't seem to work. So what could be the problem? Well, the coordinates of a normal vector are in the range between minus 1 and 1. So they can also get negative, like in this part here. But an image file like PNG can only store positive values. More specifically, only values in the range between 0 and 1. And this is why the normal map values are always in a compressed range. And we have to unpack these values to convert from the range 0 to 1 to the range minus 1 to 1. And we can do so by first scaling up the range by a factor of 2 and then subtracting 1 to shift the range down. In Blender we can do this with a vector mass node. We first multiply by 2 and then we subtract 1 to shift them down. So what we did here was we converted values in the range 0 to 1 to the range minus 1 to 1. And now we can try to rotate our vector again. And as you can see, it works. But now the colors look very strange. This is because we are now displaying the values in the range minus 1 to 1. So we only can see the positive part and all the negative values are displayed as black. So what we need to do is we have to do the opposite of what we did before. We have to convert back into the range 0 to 1. So
So before we first multiply by 2 and then subtract at 1. To do the opposite we first add 1 to shift the values up and then we have to scale it down by dividing by 2. So what we did here was we converted the values in the range minus 1 to 1 into the range of 0 to 1 again. And if we display this now we should actually get a perfect normal map again. So now we are able to rotate our normal map, but we are also able to rotate our vectors independently. And we could rotate them together by placing a value node, so we can enter here the amount of rotation. But now we are rotating both the image and the vectors in the same direction. So we have to click the invert button here, which just means that we rotate the vectors in the opposite direction. I just noticed that this value is in radians, so if we want to be able to enter degrees, we could place a math node and choose the option to radians. And now here we can enter degrees, for example 45 degrees. Alright, the rotation works fine and we can save this image to a file by just rendering an image and we can save it here to a file. A PNG RGB 16 bit for more precision. Something else you might want to try is to flip the texture. Uh, to do this, let's get rid of the rotation part and we can place a math node and let's multiply it by 1 so this doesn't change anything. But if we multiply the x axis by minus 1, we have now flipped the image horizontally. And we have to do the same for the vector. And you could just replace them by a combined XYZ node. So you can control both at once. Uh, something else you might want to do is to invert a normal map. Which just means that you basically turn it inside out. So that every extrusion is becoming a hole. We can do this by just uh, also multiplying at the end but we only invert the x and y coordinates, because z has to always point upwards.